Now, we also look at the procurement system. There have been lots of debates. In one of the budget plenary sessions, members of the National Assembly attested that the procurement procedure has been so porous that public officers could easily manipulate the process, inflate figures of contracts and key projects, and have a field day, thereby affecting the national planning structure. So what are you doing to tighten the procurement system? Well, one of the major concerns we, we have is actually the procurement process. And um, it's very cumbersome. It's very long. Uh, the executive is trying to work with the parliament to be able to reduce some of the rigidness of the provisions of the Procurement uh, Act without losing the controls that those provisions were intended to uh, provide. Uh, certainly, it's a very large um, uh, gap that we have, but the BPP itself is undertaking a number of internal reforms. In Time and again, we've had situations where uh, key projects are being imputed again. It's as if people are asking the question, are they recycling this project? Does it have an end in sight? It's, a, it's as if these things are just being repeated for the fun of it, we, as if we don't really have a clear direction. The projects like Mambila projects have been imputed in the national budget for years. Do we have an end in sight? Do we have a time of delivery? Do we have a terms of reference for many of those projects? Well, Mr. Ashuru, uh, the, pro the type of projects you just gave examples of are, are large projects. They are projects that have delivery periods that span, in some cases, over a number of years. And also, uh, and therefore, you cannot complete them in, in one budget circle. So, but usually that's not often reflected in the, in the, in the budgets. Do, do we have a long-term... Uh, expenditure framework that would address all this because it appears this gives a leeway to smart uh, uh, person executing many of these uh, projects. Well, um, maybe the gap is there is not enough in terms of re reporting of the progress of those uh, projects. Uh, some of these projects can have as long as five to seven years lifespan and also because of realities on the ground and also, uh, just by common sense, you don't want to provide for the uh, whole value of a contract when the delivery is not going to be completed within there. So uh, the MDAs that are responsible for these projects make an assessment of how much work can be done in a year, and that is what they require. And oftentimes, because the funds are limited, they are not even able to get the amount that they need for that year's work to be completed. People are saying that... Um the budget process is not transparent enough, uh, considering the fact that the details from the counterpart funding, uh, which comes from the developing, part developing partners, and also the, the fact that um, this administration rolled out a robust concessioning plan and privatization plan. And time and again, we still see huge funds allocated to this project. What's actually happening? The, what is perhaps missing is not enough information reporting about the progress of the projects that are being done. So we're trying to bridge that through um, the implementation process of the ERGP. That will see us reporting on the key priority objectives as defined in the ERGP and the progress that is expected every year and using an open process so, of reporting. But, but that suggests that there is a clear defect in Nigeria's national planning strategy. It's not a defect. Our national planning strategy has not been ideal. We have seeking to make improvements. The ERGP, previous plans of government remain plans and visionary plans. But this particular plan, we've broken it down into an implementation uh, a plan on an MDA by MDA basis, detailing out all of the projects and programs that need to be undertaken with clear, with clear key performance indicators and costs. Now, the oil benchmark 
uh, some experts have said that that is too conservative. $45 uh, to a barrel, uh, when even for the most part of the year, it's on the higher side of $50 to a barrel. So now pegging it at $45 to a barrel, how feasible, how realistic is this projection? Well, we actually went out specifically to be conservative because um, the determination of the oil revenue is a function of the oil price as well as the production volumes. It's not just the determination of price. And each of these two indices we are not in control of. We don't control the global price of crude oil and also because of the challenges that we have in the Niger Delta, we, there is a tendency of production not reaching the, marks, uh, the mark that we, we uh, anticipated. We had projected a volume of 2.3 million barrels per day as at uh, end of September uh, 2017, the average production was at 1.9 uh, million uh, barrels. You also talked about reduction of government equity in oil assets shared. Um, could you shed more light on this? Well, um, we have um, uh, plans to restructure the equity holding of Nigeria in the joint operating arrangements in the oil and gas sector. And that means we will be looking at a situation where uh, Nigeria's holding moves from 55% in some of the ventures to um, maybe under 50 so that the operating partner has a shareholding that is more than the Nigerian government. And the idea is uh, to be able to attain the kind of efficiencies that we have witnessed in the NLNG business, where the Nigerian government is holding 49% and the, operating, the other operating partners uh, collectively uh, holding a majority. Now, people have talked about the debt profile. Uh, for till recent, we have a debt profile that is approximately $70 billion. Uh, recently, the president wrote to the National Assembly for another uh, debt uh, support of $5.5 billion. And now we are seeing another 2.0 trillion Naira being proposed for debt servicing. Could you set the record straight and put this into proper perspective? The um, 2018 budget has a deficit uh, of $2 trillion that is planned to be covered by both domestic and foreign borrowing. It is true that um, uh, our debt has grown, but we made sure that we were borrowing and spending the borrowed amounts into infrastructure. So the budget of 2016, 2017, and 2018 was designed to finance capital projects using borrowing. Now, before we wind down this conversation now, we look at the ERGP and um, the, in the face of massive job cuts, uh, what are you doing to change this reality come 2018? Well, the aspirations of the ERGP is that we grow our economy to a rate that is sustainable. We have a growth rate, expected growth rate by the close of this year of 1.5%. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, we have a population um, growth rate that is about 3.2%. And we have um, a, a number of uh, uh, human development indices that, is, that are very, very poor. So for us to get to the point where the growth, economic growth rate supersedes, um, um, is greater than population growth rate to enable the impact of the growth to be felt by more people is a process, but we are working in the right direction and all the indices is showing that. The economy came out of recession, the growth uh, rate is 0.55%, uh, we expect the year to close at 1.5%, a, a very low rate, but we expect 2018, but, but, we, but we were in, in recession, remember, we came out of recession. The Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Mr. Zainab Hakmed, thank you so much for making our time to be part of this episode of Question Time. Thank you very much indeed.
Thank you very much, Mr. Agbenga Ashiro, for having me. And that's it on this episode of Question Time from Channels Television. What's your take on the proposed 2018 appropriation bill? Let us know your expectations on this budget. Send us a comment on our social media platforms. Join us on a fresh episode of the show. Many thanks for watching. I'm Benga Ashuru. Bye for now.